So, by the way, if you're wondering why Phasma or Chewbacca or Akbar or whoever wasn't in this movie more, this is why. These ten characters encompass the entirety of the moral framework of the story. I thought this was the explanation of characters' needs and wants in conflict with other characters. What does morality have to do with any of this? Now, Truby says that the theme of the story, or rather, that theme, or what I call moral argument, is the brain of the story. Character is the heart and circulation system. Revelations are the nervous system. Story structure is the skeleton. Scenes are the skin. If this diagram is the themes or arguments of morals, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Is Ray fighting Kylo over a lightsaber a, a moral argument? What morality is in conflict here? Is Holdo not telling Poe the plan or or giving Poe any orders a moral conflict? Is DJ in moral conflict with Finn? Because he tells him to live free? Is, is, that, is, is that the argument? Our final questions are essentially, how does this character change, and what impact does that change have on everyone else? Okay, character development. The first sentence here implies an arc, where a character is forced to make a choice and grows in one way toward a change in viewpoint or philosophy, or a hardening of their original perspective. The second aspect doesn't really matter all that much, because this change must occur by a protagonist, not side characters in their useless little story threads. A side character can have an arc, but it's usually not essential to a plot, and it's completely non-essential to The Last Jedi. Well, they all do what they need to do. Poe becomes a wiser leader. Where and when does Poe become a wiser leader? He gets grounded, starts a mutiny, gets shot by Leia, decides not to sacrifice himself on a pod racer that seemingly has no weapons, and decides to follow some foxes. Which one makes him a wiser leader here? I guess not sacrificing himself for the rebels on the pod racer? That would be the clearest bet. Does that mean Finn is now unwise because he tries to sacrifice himself? And does that then mean that Rose is thus wise because she tries to save Finn, or or does that make him unwise? I, I'm a bit confused here where the conflict is, choice, or, or what the character growth is for Poe here. What is Poe's arc? Rey becomes an emotionally stable Jedi. Okay, what conflict was she in, and what choice did she make to become an emotionally stable Jedi? When did she become a Jedi? Because she defeated Jake in a stick battle when she used a lightsaber? and chose to leave him? And she tried harder to lift rocks this time? What choice did she make that made her grow as a character? What are you talking about? What is Rey's arc? And Finn joins a team. Finn was already part of the team back in The Force Awakens. He was forced into not escaping the ship when Rose electrocuted him at the start of The Last Jedi. What conflict did he experience? And what choice did he make that caused him to grow as a character. It was worth it though. To tear up that town, make him hurt. In his fight against Phasma, Finn affirms that he has joined a side after seeing the damage a man like DJ, a man he was once like, can do. When was Finn like DJ? When wasn't Finn part of the rebels? What, just because he said rebel scum, now he's part of the rebels? He was about to be executed, and then Magical Space Fairy saved his life from lightspeed ramming, and he was nearly killed by Phasma, and starts talking to her after beating her helmet. Where is the ideological conflict? What, what is the choice he made to become part of a group? What is Finn's arc? Poe grows through his conflict with Holdo. Okay, I think he actually does here. I think he faces Holdo, decides to mutiny against her, and he does. He he forgets to lock her up, but hey, you know, he goes through with the process. He confirms what he always was, a hot-headed pilot who takes action, and he acts against his superior who is doing nothing in a leadership role. It's it's not much of a character growth, but it does satisfy the basic understanding of character development. Through conflict, a choice is made, and the character changes into one other character or perspective or hardens their existing perspective. However, none of this has any plot relevance. It's a side character. It's worthless, especially since it has no plot integrity. The plot can go along just fine when you remove Poe from the intro of the story, let alone having Poe 
having his mutiny. And his actions provide an opportunity for Finn to prove that he really is self-sacrificing. Yes, that's true. And fortunately, Rose screws that up because Ryan Johnson. So all these three characters equally screw up one character growth, Pose, which was a hardening. Finn's attempted sacrifice came out of nowhere and was non-justifiable because he had no arc. He made no choice through conflict that forged him into a new or hardened character that explained why he wanted to sacrifice himself. Kylo's descent into villainy pushes Rey into heroism. Kylo was always a bad guy. Really. And, and what did Kylo do that pushed Rey to heroism? He, he opposed her? Okay. So Rey is heroic because Kylo is the bad guy. Wow. Allowing her to save the remaining rebels. So because Kylo was the bad guy who fought the force projection of Jake, that enabled Rey to lift a lot of rocks. So fighting with the Red Guard dudes and fighting over a lightsaber and exploding it gave her control over lifting rocks better? Or she choosing not to go with them made her lift rocks better? the hell am I talking about? So each character isn't isolated. Each plot line affects the others. Yes, uh, characters and stories tend to make choices based on other characters. That's kind of how stories work. In this case, like Poe letting Finn and Rose go off on their useless mission, and that gets a lot of people killed. That's, that's true. But those aren't plot lines. They're tangentially related. That's Poe's thread has nothing to do with Finn choosing to sacrifice himself into the battering ram cannon. Maybe if Poe did want to sacrifice himself, Finn, maybe Finn wouldn't ram himself into the... I, I don't know, maybe. Rose's choice to, to say Finn has nothing to do with Ray's ability to lift rocks, or, or Finn's desire to sacrifice himself for that matter. Uh, Jake and, and Kylo have nothing to do with anyone except Ray, and the only one that's related is Poe deciding not to sacrifice himself. And let's be clear here. Poe, Finn, Rose, DJ, Holdo, and Leia have nothing to do with Rey. The only thing that connects Rey to the other threads is that she possibly used that, that bracelet thing that Finn picked up, and I assume she just followed it to get to Crate. What happened? She took Snoke's escape craft. We know where she's going. Get all our forces down to that resistance base. Let's finish this. Finish this? Who did... Wow! Yeah! Although she and Chewie could have just followed the First Order ships as they were going through there when they escaped, I wasn't too clear on how she got... She and, and the Falcon got there anyway. So, hey, Rey can lift heavy rocks because of some conflict she went through that's not clearly explained or shown. Sure, why not? In answering all seven questions for each character, The Last Jedi tells complete stories. And not just for these three characters, but for Luke and Kylo as well. That's more dynamic characters, as in characters who undergo a change, than any other Star Wars film. One, I admit that Poe changes, but not to become a leader, he was always a leader, and hardens his perspective when he chooses to mutiny against Holdo. Two, Finn was always a rebel. Rose just forced him to stay on the ship. Three, Rey does not become a Jedi. She is just magically able to lift a lot of heavy rocks simultaneously. If that's your definition of a Jedi, as it pretty much is Rey's, then you are correct. A Jedi lifts rocks. It's a power that Jedi have that lets them control people and make things float. Impressive. Every word in that sentence was wrong. Or at least one of its three plot lines is great. It has one plot line. Characters can have their own plots, but this story has a single protagonist, and the others could be considered subplots, but they are not because they do not connect or support the main plot. I'm not going to get into semantics here, but the point that this YouTuber seems to believe in is these characters all went under some sort of character growth, when none of them did aside from Poe, who just hardened himself, and then he decides not to be an idiot and ram a pod racer with no guns into a big machine and follow some foxes. They are arguments for it being competent. And there's a boatload of evidence for it being a chaotic mess of asinine writing, forgetting or destroying entire setups from the previous movies, and flushing the Star Wars label down the toilet. For it having a rock-solid dramatic foundation that I think you have to acknowledge even if the movie made you angry. 
Firstly, your analysis of drama is not rock solid. I didn't see any dramatic structure. All you did was break down characters into self-invented categories and call these arcs and plots that somehow you say they connect with each other at the end. You tried a smattering of Truby but didn't really use his techniques. There were three almost completely independent stories here that were tangentially and coincidentally related where Flyboy follows some foxes because Jake has a heart attack. The Last Jedi should be applauded for resisting the temptation to indulge its audience with fan service callbacks and references. Yeah, let's just applaud a franchise that doesn't give the audience what it wants. Because, you know, when I go to a steakhouse, I always order a salad just to be subversive. I wanted to subvert my steak expectations and then steal all the steak knives and then just throw them out the window. For telling a real story. And your idea of a real story, and I'm actually quoting with bunny ears, what is that exactly? Can you have a, a real, true story, too? How many generic, all-encompassing adjectives can we use here? That questions the themes and ideas of the previous films. In what way did The Last Jedi question ideas and themes of the previous films? And how is that a good thing? Remember, it's not what a story is about. It's how a story is told that matters. Ryan Johnson could have actually tossed all the setups from the previous movie and still made a completely unrelated, but still good story, all out of his imagination. Remember, a story can do whatever it likes, however it likes, but is it believable? Is it believable that all the setups from The Force Awakens connected and made sense? Was the payoff worth it? Is, is Luke's character believable? Well, apparently not even to Mark Hamill, the guy who plays him. So I almost had to think of Luke as another character. Uh, maybe he's Jake Skywalker. He's not my Luke Skywalker. Is, is Rose believable? Is Holdo believable? Was Ray's Mary soonest subverted, or at least believable within a smattering of backstory to explain her abilities, where they came from? Was her ability to lift rocks at the end believable? Was lightspeed ramming believable? Was uh, forced ghost Yoda being able to summon lightning believable? Or did this movie, with its constant use of subversion, destroy an existing franchise through retcons and poorly thought out ideas? And even still, why even have a film that questions the ideas and themes of previous films? The Last Jedi may not be the film you wanted, but it is the movie this franchise and its audience needed. It's certainly the film the franchise needed if you wanted to kill the franchise. Nearly 100,000 people seem to disagree with you. Now, if you're tying this into a truby need and want dynamic as if the audience is some sort of character experience and character development, then yeah, The Last Jedi did create conflict in the audience in the worst way possible by having us hate the film for its numerous flaws of storytelling, uh, forgetting its previous movie and the characters of yesteryear and not being a real Star Wars movie. And yes, that is a term I can actually define. Its fans have made the choice to boycott the series, causing their original viewpoint of what a Star Wars movie is and hardening that perspective. Just like Poe, we've declared mutiny on Holdo and can see just how horrific a story we were given. Um, I would be worried if everybody across the board was like, yeah, that was a good movie. It's much more exciting to me when you get, you know, um, a group of people who are like coming up to you and, and really, really excited about it. And then there are other people who walk out just, I mean, literally saying it was the worst movie I've ever seen. Having those two extremes to me is, you know, is the mark of uh, the type of movie that I want to make. So. Some men aren't looking for anything logical, like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn.